Philippe in Brussels, Belgium writes, thank you for your explanations. I now understand the impact of speaker impedance and sensitivity. Good, good job. But what I don't understand is that the same amplifier has two output levels into eight or four ohm. That's approximately double. How is this possible since wattage is a measure of power? How can the power of an amplifier be at the same time 150 watts into 8 ohms and 300 watts into 4 ohms? This is probably the 50th time I've tried to answer this. And so for those of you that have already gotten this, and you know, forgive me, but as I have said before, on this channel, <clears throat> one of the things I want to focus on is repeating over and over those tough to get concepts that my viewers struggle with. And here's the way I figure it. If I repeat the answer to the same question 10 times, 20 times, every time I say it, I say it differently because I don't have a script. I just stand up here and yap, right? So I have one of the greatest pleasures of doing the Ask Paul series has been when people write me and go, oh my God, I just got it. A light bulb just went off. That probably brings me more pleasure in just about anything because if I can do that, that's, that's amazing. This makes it all worthwhile. All right, let me, let, me, let me see if I can break this down for you and I'll try and do it as quickly and simply as possible. An amplifier that doubles its power, let's just say 100 to 200 watts. So an 8 ohm speaker, you're going to put a signal in, <clears throat> that signal is going to play at a certain loudness level, and it's going to produce a certain number of watts. And let's just say we put a steady state tone in, okay? Thousand cycles, steady state tone, <coughs> steady, ooh, try to say that a whole bunch of times, steady state tone and we can measure the wattage, all right? And we're getting 100 watts into that speaker. It's going to be really loud. Now, we keep all of that the same. And it, remember, it's making an, a small signal on the input, big signal on the output. And when we put that big signal into the output, connect it up to this 8 ohm speaker, the voltage, we're going to say, is this tall, right? Now, if we pull the speaker out, and leave the amplifier alone, it's, if it's a good amp, if it's a reasonable amp, this voltage is going to stay exactly there, right? Now, magically, see if I can keep that up there. Okay, so here's our voltage, right? I'm now going to hook up a 4 ohm speaker. And guess what? The voltage, if this amp can actually double, will stay the same. So if you look up something simple called Ohm's Law, you'll know that for a given voltage across a given resistance, it takes more current, more power, more amperage to maintain that voltage across a lower impedance. So this voltage into 8 ohms takes, let's, let's say, I'm going to use some figures here just to keep the math simple, because I'm not very good at math. And this is way, way off, but let's just say I have 10 volts across here. And in order for that 10 volts to remain 10 volts without the speaker, this impedance, remember that's the thing that's consuming this power, without it pulling this voltage down, this impedance of 8 ohm is going to require 10 amps in order to do that. So 10 times 10, 10 amps times 10 volts equals 100 watts. All right, now I'm going to change this 8 ohm resistance to 4 ohms, right? But the voltage remains the same. That's going to take twice the current to keep the voltage the same. And now we have 20 amps has to go into this 10 volts in order to produce the same output into this lower impedance. And that makes 200 watts. Voltage is the same. The current goes up in order to make all of that work.
light bulbs going off? <laughs> we'll try over and over. All right. Thanks for watching.